So I'll take you through this presentation. Uh, I'll talk about the viral coronavirus. Most of the viral infections tend to affect the epithelium, both of the conjunctiva and the cornea. So a typical viral lesion is better called a keratoconjunctivitis, since both the conjunctiva and the cornea are affected. In some viral infections, conjunctival involvement is more prominent, such as pharyngoconjunctival fever, whereas in the others, the cornea is more involved, for example, herpes simplex. The viral infections of the conjunctiva include a number of the diseases, number of the diseases or a group of the diseases, adenoviral conjunctivitis, herpes simplex keratoconjunctivitis, herpes zoster conjunctivitis, Molluscum contagiosum conjunctivitis, pox virus conjunctivitis, mixovirus conjunctivitis, paramyxovirus conjunctivitis, and arbor or ARBOR viral conjunctivitis. The clinical presentations of the acute viral conjunctivitis include either acute follicular conjunctivitis or acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Let's talk about some of the common conditions. Adenoviral conjunctivitis. Adenoviruses are the commonest cause of the viral conjunctivitis infect. These are non enveloped, double stranded DNA viruses which replicate within the nucleus of the host cells. That means the description of the virus is a double stranded DNA virus. The general reservoir of the adenovirus is only human. 50 one distinct human adenoviral serotypes, 51 distinct human adenoviral serotypes have been identified and they are classified into six sub genera A to F. More than half of the adenoviral subtypes belong to the subgenus D. With a few exceptions, most adenoviral conjunctivitis is caused by this genus, that is, subgenus. Clinical types of the adenoviral conjunctivitis include epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, non specific acute follicular conjunctivitis, pharyngoconjunctival fever, or chronic relapsing adenoviral conjunctivitis. These are the different varieties of the adenoviral conjunctivitis. Epidemic keratoconjunctivitis is a type of acute follicular conjunctivitis. It is mostly associated with superficial punctate keratitis. It usually occurs in epidemics, hence the name epidemic keratoconjunctivitis has been used. Etiology of the EKC is mostly, it is mostly caused by the adenovirus type 8, 19, and 37. With type 8 being the classic cause, mostly we get adenoviral epidemic keratoconjunctivitis due to the type 8 adenovirus. The condition is markedly contagious and spreads through the contact with the contaminated fingers, solutions, and chronometers. So the medical professionals need to be careful about the uh, about these facts when it comes to handle the patients. The clinical features: incubation period of the EKC is about eight days after the infection is contracted, and the virus is shed out from the inflamed eye for two to three weeks. So there is actually a period of infectivity. So the virus can still be shed off and it may be up to three weeks. Symptoms are similar to similar severe form of the acute conjunctivitis and it improves. So these are the symptomatically, it is quite similar to the acute cardinal conjunctivitis. And the symptoms are, of course, redness of sudden onset associated with watering, usually profuse with mild mucoid discharge, ocular discomfort, and foreign body sensations. Photophobia is usually mild, which becomes marked when cornea is involved. These are the signs. When the eyelids are swollen, causing a narrow of the palpebral fissure, narrowing of the palpebral fissure. The clinical signs include hyperemia, is usually mild and prominent. Emotion of the is often present. 
follicles of small to moderate size, typically involving the lower phonics and the palpebral genitiva, form the characteristic feature. The follicles in the lower phonics and the palpebral genitiva is quite classical as shown in this picture. The papillary reaction may also be seen in many cases. We call it papillary hyperplasia. There can be petechial subconjunctival hemorrhages that may be seen in severe adenoviral form of the conjunctivitis. Pseudomembrane formation is so lining the lower phonics and the palpebral conjunctiva may be formed in a minority of about 3% cases with severe inflammation. So you may get given a pseudomembrane formation as shown in this picture. Right. As for the cornea, the cornea can be involved in as high as 80% of the cases. And it is characterized by the following lesions. Epithelial microcystic diffuse fine non-staining lesions are common during the early stage. So the corneal involvement is quite common, but they do not stain in the initial phase. Superficial punctate keratitis is a typical feature of the EKC as shown in this picture. It usually occurs after 10 days of the onset of the symptoms and it lasts for about three weeks, even after the subsidence of the conjunctival inflammation. So it is important to remember that superficial punctate keratitis or what popularly it is known as the SPK, is a typical feature and it may persist even for up to three weeks after the subsidence of the lateral infection. So don't get carried away by the presence of the SPK lesions and do not over treat these patients. Subepithelial infiltrates may develop under the focal epithelial lesions in 20 to 50 percent of the cases. These opacities may be initially disabling and may persist for months to years. So these epithelial infiltrates can develop and this may be a disabling uh, sign of the EKC. Pre-auricular lymphadenopathy is associated in almost all the cases of the EKC. Differential diagnosis of the EKC, it needs to be differentiated from the other cause of the acute follicular conjunctivitis that includes the other types of the adenoviral character conjunctivitis, such as monospecific acute follicular conjunctivitis and follicular and a pharyngoconjunctival fever. In fact, these two are also the causes of the follicular conjunctivitis. It also needs to be differentiated from the acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, herpes simplex viral conjunctivitis, systemic viral infections, such as herpes zoster conjunctivitis, measles, mumps, chikungunya virus conjunctivitis, and even the adult inclusion conjunctivitis. So all these different forms of conjunctivitis need to be differentiated from adenoviral conjunctivitis. The main feature being involved with the cornea, which I have already described in my previous slides. The differentiation is made from typical clinical features, as I said, in each entity. Investigations are required mainly for research purposes only and in some non resolving cases. And these investigations include conjunctival cytology with Zimsa stain that shows predominantly mononuclear cells in adenovirus conjunctivitis and multinucleated joint cells in the herpetic conjunctivitis. So I think these points must be remembered the predominant mononuclear cell reaction is a feature of the adenoviral conjunctivitis, and a multinucleated giant cell may be a feature of the herpetic conjunctivitis. PCR is sensitive and is specific for viral uh, disease. Point of care immunographic immunochromatography test takes about 10 minutes to detect adenoviral antigen in tears and have an excellent sensitivity and specificity both. The viral cultures are tedious and sometimes, and it's time consuming with a variable sensitivity, sensitivity but 100% specificity. So these are some of the investigations that may be required in more recalcitrant cases or for the research purposes. As far as the treatment of the EKC, 
It is mainly support treatment for amelioration of the symptoms. There is only treatment that is required. And these supportive measures include cold compresses, sunglasses to decrease the flare, decongestants and lubricant tear drops to decrease the discomfort. Topical antibiotics help to prevent the superadded bacterial infection. Topical antiviral drugs, although it's an adenoviral infection, but the topical antiviral drugs are not of much value in this type of antibiotics. Recently, our promising results have been reported with adenine arabinocytes, which is called ARA A or ARA A. And with the COV. So these are the newer antiviral agents that have been tried in these cases of the antiviral antibiotics. As such, it is not required in most of the cases. Topical steroids should not be used during the active inflammation, and these steroids may enhance the viral replication and extend the period of infectivity. Weak steroids such as fluoromethalone or rotipredinol half percent are indicated in patients with subepithelial infiltrates and in those with the membrane formation. So actually they indicate a more severe form of the disease where the sprites may be indicated. Of course, some choice is a weaker sprite, which has got a less propensity for a rise in the abdominal pressure. Prevention of infection of, to the context is a very important part of the management of the antibiotics since it is this conjunctivitis, it is highly contagious, and patients may be infectious for up to 11 days after the onset of the disease. So, it may continue, the patient may continue to infect the others. Let's remember that the transmission usually occurs from finger, from the eyes to the finger to the eyes. So, eye, finger, eye, this chain you need to remember and break this chain. Thermometers, contact lenses, and eye drops are the other routes of the transmission of the disease from one person to others who, whosoever comes in contact. So medical professionals have a special responsibility to be careful while handling these patients. Preventive measures include frequent hand wash, relative isolation of the infected individuals, avoiding eye rubbing, and avoiding use of the common towels or handkerchief sharing, and disinfection of the ophthalmic instruments and clinical surfaces after the examination of a patient is essential. So whenever you examine a patient, make sure that the part where the patient was lying or the areas where the patient touched should be thoroughly disinfected before the other patient is examined on these diagnostic tools of the examination chair. Non-specific acute follicular conjunctivitis is the most common form of the acute follicular conjunctivitis. So this is a quite a common uh, type of the viral conjunctivitis. It is caused by the adenovirus serotypes 1 to 11 and 19. Clinical features of this type, which we call it non-specific acute follicular conjunctivitis, are mild to moderate, then the mild to moderate form of the acute follicular conjunctivitis, the cardinal involvement is not known. The features are just like any other acute follicular conjunctivitis. However, the cornea is spared, and the treatment and preventive measures are similar to what I described in the part of the epidemic carrier conjunctivitis or EPSC. Feringo conjunctival fever is a highly infective adenoviral infection. It is commonly associated with the subtypes 3, 4, and 7. It is transmitted by three routes personal contact, fomites, or so the swimming pools are the types. So this very conjunctival fever is another viral condition, viral conjunctivitis that needs to be remembered. The clinical feature of the Therio conjunctival fever it primarily affects children and it appears in the epidemic form. It is characterized by acute follicular conjunctivitis associated with pharyngitis. And therefore, 
fever and pre auricular lymphadenopathy are present. This is because of the volume of the pharynx, as we already know. The corneal involvement of, in the form of the superficial punctate keratopathy is seen only in about 30% of the cases. Treatment is supportive as in case of the EKC. So here also in pericardial fever, it is a supportive treatment of the essentially symptomatic. The new Kessel conjunctivitis is a rare type of the acute follicular conjunctivitis, which is caused by a new Kessel virus. The infection is derived from contact with diseased owls, and thus the condition mainly affects poultry workers because they are more likely to contract the disease named new Kessel conjunctivitis. Clinically, the condition is similar to the turning of Another viral affection may be acute herpetic conjunctivitis. The acute herpetic follicular conjunctivitis is always an accompaniment of the primary herpetic infection, which mainly occurs in the small children and in the adolescent. So, the disease is actually contracted in children and in the adolescent. The disease is commonly caused by the herpes simplex virus type 1 and spreads by kissing or other close personal contact. The children are more likely to contract the disease. Herpes simplex virus type 2 is associated with genital infections and may also involve the eyes in adults as well as in children, although rarely. So we understand that the acute herpetic conjunctivitis is caused by these two types, herpes simplex virus type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is seen in the small children and adolescents, but is seen 2 is associated with genital infections and seen in the eyes of the adults and sometimes in children also. The clinical features of the acute herpetic conjunctivitis include uh, uh, there is a unilateral affection carrying an incubation period of about 5 to 14 days. So that is what is about the demography part of the acute follicular conjunctivitis. It may occur in two clinical forms, typical and atypical. The typical form of the conjunctivitis, the follicular conjunctivitis, it is usually associated with the other lesions of the primary infection, such as vesicular lesion of the face and the lips. So a primary herpes simplex lesion will be in the form of vesicular lesion of the face and the lid. It must arouse, arouse the suspicion that the eyes can also be infected. In a typical form, however, the follicular conjunctivitis occurs without the lesion of the face, eyelids, and the condition then resembles epidemic conjunctivitis. The condition may evolve through the phases of the non specific hyperemia, follicular hyperplasia, and pseudomembrane formation. Corneal involvement, although rare, is not uncommon in the primary herpes. It may be in the form of the coarse epithelial keratitis or typical dendritic keratitis. It usually occurs late. So, primarily, the infection was contracted in the childhood and the adult phase or in the later part of the life, the disease may manifest as the corneal lesion, typically a dendritic keratitis. The auricular lymphadenopathy almost always occurs. The treatment of the primary herpetic infection, now it is usually a self-limiting disorder. Topical antiviral drugs control the infection effectively and can prevent the recurrences. The supportive measures are this, as we do in the EKC or epidemic therapy. The acute hemolytic conjunctivitis is an acute inflammation of the conjunctiva characterized by multiple conjunctival hemorrhages, conjunctival hyperemia, and mild follicular hyperplasia. As far as the etiology, the disease, acute hemolytic conjunctivitis, is caused by the picornavirus, that is enterovirus type 17, which are RNA viruses of the small size are picor. Picor is small. The disease is very contagious and is transmitted by direct hand to eye contact. 
clinically, that this is a according to the epidemic form in the far east. Africa and England, and hence, when an epidemic hemorrhagic conjunctivitis has been suggested. An epidemic of the disease was first recognized in Ghana in 1969 at a time when Apollo 11 spacecraft was launched. Hence, the name Apollo conjunctivitis was given to this type of the conjunctivitis. The incubation period of the and the benefit is very short, in one to two days. The symptoms include pain, redness, watering, mild photophobia, and transient blurring of the vision, and the lid swelling. The signs of the hemorrhagic conjunctivitis are conjunctival congestion, chemosis, multiple hemorrhages in the bulbar conjunctiva, mild follicular hyperplasia, lid edema, and pre auricular lymphadenopathy. The coronal involvement may occur in the form of fine epithelial keratitis. The treatment of the hemorrhagic conjunctivitis is, since it's a very infectious and it poses a major potential problem of the cross infection, it needs to be treated urgently. The prophylactic measures are very important and are the same as described for the epidemic keratitis conjunctivitis. There is no specific effective curative treatment known for this for the treatment of this condition. However, broad spectrum antibiotic eye drops may be used to prevent secondary bacterial infection. Usually, the disease has a self-limiting course of about a week. Supporting measures are the same as the epidemic. Thank you.